Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use clone layers to create an animated loop animation inside of Apple's Motion software. So let me switch over to Motion. And I created a logo loop animation for my good friend and client, Philip Van Dusen. And in this animation, what I had is an animation. Let me show it first so you can see the end result. So what I did is I had an animation that started off where the letters rearrange themselves. It pauses for a few seconds. And then we wanted to do an exact animation, but in reverse of what I had at the beginning. And then it pauses for a few seconds. And at the end of the video, it would just loop to the beginning. And that loop had to be seamless. So this video will always constantly be playing for as long as you want it to. And it'll be a perfect loop animation. So the challenge I had for this animation is that we wanted to do six different versions. And I wanted to prepare myself for if there's any changes, I didn't have to do the changes twice. One for the animation being rearranged, rearranged, and then for the ending animation where everything goes back to its normal state. So I didn't want to do those animations twice because when we start doing too many changes, there's room for error. And since this logo had to be pixel perfect for it to be a seamless loop, I wanted to min minimize as many changes as possible. And I wanted that last animation to be exactly the same as the beginning, but just in reverse. So I decided to use clone layers. So I'm going to show you here how I used it and how it was able to help me save time. There's a lot of things you can use clone layers for, which I'll use and show you in future videos. But for this one, I just want to show you how I was able to make this logo loop animation and how the clone layers were able to help me. So first I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn off the clones that I have, the clone layers, and I'm going to turn on the original animation I had. So this is the original animation where it goes through the letters moving and that's it. I just did it once. Just all I, all I needed was just that animation. So then what I did is I created a group. I grouped all those layers. So the letter A, the letter L, the E, and the X. I grouped them together. So I, what I do is I select all the layers, layers and I select group. Once I do, did that group, I grouped it again so I can add more animations when things need to move left or right to keep everything centered. So I just regrouped it again. And inside of that main group, I called it group animated main so I can always find it easier. So I just labeled it correctly. And then what I did is I right mouse clicked and then I select make clone layer. This allows us to take all that group, all those elements inside and turn all that group into a clone layer. And then what I did is I muted it. And to mute that, all you do is need to untick that little checkbox. It just kind of mutes it. All right, sorry about that. And once we have done that, we just uncheck it. And I'm going to turn the clones on my clones layer. Now the beauty about clones is that everything I do to that main element, everything that's underneath, any changes that I do, uh, position of the letters, the animation, will be reflected inside of the clone layers. So I only have to do that animation once and everything will be just uh, reflected inside of the clone layers. So what I did is I first created one clone layer by selecting the group animated main, make clone layer, and the first one I called normal. And that's just, I'm just going to leave that alone and leave it to play out through the whole animation as such. And if I turn off the other two, you'll see it'll be exactly the same as the other one. It just does the intro animation and it ends. The next thing I did is I duplicated that clone layer and I called it reverse. So clone layer reverse. Then I go to properties. Then go down to timing inside the inspector tab. So it's inspector properties timing. And then I just tick on this reverse. So what this does, it allows me to play that animation in reverse. And then what I did is I slid this clone layer so it matches with the endpoint to the new endpoint of the reverse layer. So now if you play it back, you'll see that same animation playing in reverse. 
And then since I needed this to hold for a few more seconds at the end, I duplicated the normal layer again. I click Command D or right mouse click Duplicate. And then I go into my Inspector Properties Timing and for still, turn the still on, and I bring this down to zero. The lowest it can go is 0.1, but I type in zero and it automatically switches to 0.1. But what that does is shows me a still frame. So that's a still of the beginning of the of the animation, which is this, the beginning part of the animation. So that's just going to be a still for the rest of the animation. So what do I do now is we click on the clones here. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is if I send this over to the client and the client has a few changes, all I need to do is make my changes to the beginning animation, to the main master group that I first had worked on. So for example, I'm going to use some random numbers. I'm going to use some extreme numbers here. So let's say I want to rotate this instead of 90 degrees. Right now I switch into 90 degrees. Instead of 90 degrees, I want to make it 450 degrees. Something just wild out there just so you can really see what I'm doing on the X. So the X is going to rotate 450 degrees. So it's going to do this crazy flip it to do. And then I'm going to select the E. And on the E, I'm going to change the scale to be even smaller. So instead of 35, I'm going to make it negative 65. And I'm using behaviors for all these uh, animations also to help save me time. So now the letter is going even smaller. And then what I'm also going to do just to see all the changes that I did is I'm going to rotate the, the A 180 degrees. So it's going to be upside down. So as you can see, I did a lot of changes to this. So normally if I would have done all these changes, I would have to do it at the beginning and I would also have to do it at the end to kind of match up the reversal of the animation. But since I'm using clone layers, if I play forward, you'll see it worked perfectly well. So I get a perfect animation that matches exactly to the beginning, but just in reverse. So that is how the clone layers are able to help save me time. So by, to do a loop animation. So maybe this can help you come up with other ideas that you can use for your own animations, or maybe you're trying to do something like this to do a loop animation and you realize that it's kind of tedious to do the animation twice and it just opens up for a more human error. So anyway, I hope this video helps. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. You can visit my website at Dason.com or MotionMasterTemplates.com or MotionMasterAcademy.com. Thank you for your valuable time and have an amazing day.